Hello guys, welcome to your daily dose of mathematics. Today's video is really important for anyone studying mathematics at any level. But uh, for, you know, uh, for people who are doing A-levels, this is going to be extremely important for people in university courses. Calculus, this is going to be extremely important. But even if you are in O-levels, it's a very good basic to have in your arsenal because this is really important and people start to mess up um, very important things when they go to advanced portions of mathematics later on in their lives. So let's understand the rule that I'm going to teach you before I start explaining what it means. So let's do screen. You cannot not cancel or divide by a variable term unless you are confirmed that it is a non-zero term. So we can only cancel with terms which we are sure that they are non-zero. If they are not sure, if we are not sure that they are non-zero, we cannot cancel with them. Now let me explain that with a lot of examples in this video. So just stay with me, it will get clearer as we go along. So number one, first of all, so I'm going to write a very basic example. I'm going to write x squared is equals to 4x. So what do you think over here? Can we cancel this x with this x and you know just get rid of one x and we will get x is equals to 4? If your answer is yes, you're making a horrible mistake that I want you to stop making so that you can excel in your exams and at any, any level of maths. Now the problem is that if we solve this in that way, if you, can, if you choose to cancel this x with this x, you are left with only one value of x. Now, okay, so we have got an x is equals to 4. So what went wrong? The answer is that we made a horrible mistake by cutting this x because if you go back one step, x squared is equals to 4x was a quadratic equation. We were supposed to have at least two. We, have, we were supposed to have exactly, actually, exactly two solutions of this equation. I have a question. What happened to your other solution? Where did it go? So this was the wrong way of attempting this question. Now, what should we have done? Because we should have done, the correct way should have been x squared minus 4x is equals to 0. Now take x common, x minus 4 is equal to 0. And now either x is equals to 0 or x is equals to 4. So that is the correct solution because the, now you have two solutions for that. Now, you might be thinking, can there be a case with the same equation where I would be allowed to cancel with x? Yes, there is a case for that. And let me show you how. So I, for that to happen, I will show you a graph which would look something like this. And I would say find the coordinates of point A. And this equation would be equal to y is equals to x squared minus 4x. So to find this point A, I would write, uh, I would have to put y is equals to 0. So I will write 0 is equal to x squared minus 4x. Now, x squared is equal to 4x over here. Now, once you have x squared is equal to 4x over here, now, let me ask you the same question again. Can we cancel this x? Now, you might say no, but actually we can over here. How, how is that possible? Because we are solving for point A. At point A, we can clearly see on the diagram that x cannot be 0. The diagram was provided for this purpose. So now I know that x is non-zero, and if something is confirmed as non-zero, you are allowed to cancel with that variable. Now you can simply cancel x and the final value of x will be equal to 4 which will be the value of a at this position and so for the same equation there are different variations possible but that all depends upon what the question gives you as basic information so you cannot cancel with a variable unless we are sure that they are non-zero for example for this equation if no data is given you cannot assume x as non-zero you have to solve for both values of x for this part we saw that it was given that a was non-zero and hence we were able to cancel this. Let me show you another example which is very similar. So now I have equation very similar to this that is n square is equals to 4n but now this time I'm going to change the instructions a little bit. I'm going to tell you that this is now we're not no longer in algebra we are now in the chapter for sequences and for sequences we are familiar that n represents the term number. n represents the term number over m. So we know that n is a term number. Now I have the same question for you again. 
would you cancel N over here, yes or no? So if your answer is yes, that is actually correct. How is that correct? It is correct because N is the term number. We know that term numbers cannot start from zero. Term numbers are always integers starting from one, two, three, and so on. So any sequence will always have term numbers starting from one. It is confirmed that the term number in any sequence cannot be zero. Now, if you're so sure about that, now you're allowed to cancel with N. And there is no trouble in canceling with N over here. So this is a very fine example of where we have a similar equation and you can fearlessly cancel with N. So this is another example. Let me take you to another example. And that's actually very interesting. The equation would stay same. Just by changing the domain of the question, I will change the rules. So let me explain how is that possible. So for example, if you have sine x is equal to, uh, sorry, 2 sine x cos x is equal to uh, sine x. Uh, the same equation is over here, 2 sine x cos x is equal to sine x. So the first one, for the first one, I'm explaining, a, uh, I'm writing a domain of 0 till 90. And for the second one, the domain is again from 0 till 90. Okay, and this time 0 and 90 are included. So for the first one, let's have a look. Would you cancel this sine x with this sine x if you're in your example? So what would you do? So just stop and try to guess what would I do? Would I cancel the sine x, yes or no? So you don't have to think this intuitively. Just go back and read your rule before taking a decision. So you cannot cancel by a variable term. Sine x is a variable term. We're going, not going to cancel with that unless we're sure that it is non-zero. Now, is sine x term ever zero? We know that it is zero at zero, 180 degree and 360 degree. We all are familiar with the grid for sine x, for sine x. For sine x, we know sine terms are 0 on 0, 90, and 180, and 360. Can you see the domain over here? For this domain, 0 is not included. That means from 0 to 90, in this domain, sine x term will never attain the value 0. So we are sure that this sine x is non-zero. So it is perfectly all right to cancel this term, and you will get 2 cos x is equal to 1. And now you can solve for cos x is equals to 1 by 2. Wherever, and later on you can keep on solving. Now, whereas over here, not much has changed vis uh, visually, but very technically, we, I have changed a little bit of things. So the equation is same again. Uh, the domain is almost same. Now, 0 and 90 are included. Now, what has changed now? Can you still cancel this sine x with this sine x? The answer now is no. Because for this domain, there is a point where sine x can be zero, and that is at point zero. At this point, if you cancel this sine x, you're going to lose some of your solutions, just like we lost some solution when we canceled x over there. So for this one, you're not allowed to cancel with sine x because sine x can be zero. It's not confirmed that it's a non-zero term. So anything that can be zero can, ne can never be canceled like this. So how would we solve this? Then you bring both terms to one side and factorize. So two sine x cos x, minus sine x equal to zero, take sine x common. So two cos x minus one is equal to zero. You will have two separate equations, either sine x is equal to zero, that will give some solutions to you in this domain, and two cos x minus one is equal to zero. That will also generate some solutions. So these are like quite handful of examples, and there are many more examples uh, where we cannot cancel variables, and they're very similar to each other. The thing is that you have to be really particular about it. You have to be really attentive about this. So I would just, I always tell my students to take this precaution. Whenever you're canceling with a variable term, just go and check in the entire question. Is there a hint 
that that number, that variable term can never be zero. If there is a hint, if you can find an evidence that it cannot be zero, then you're comfortable to cancel with that any point, at any point in time. And if there is no hint, then you should not cancel it. You should bring all the terms to one side and then cancel it with a, uh, then try to factorize it and solve. Uh, before I end, there is just one term that I would like to emphasize because that is left over here. Uh, there are some terms which are universally never zero. And so you can be very safe in canceling them. And then one, t one of those terms is for paper three people, I would just like to write it somewhere over here. Anything to the power, ex any exponential term is non-zero. If you ever have any exponential term, e raised to power x, two raised to power x, five raised to power x, whenever x is in the, new, uh, in the power, any e raised to power x, any exponential term is always non-zero. So whenever you're canceling with an exponential term, you don't have to think about this rule. You can comfortably cancel with those rules. So I think I have comprehensively covered all of the variables that can be covered over here. And I am, I think I have not skipped any important examples so far. So if you have uh, understood what I have just explained here, do share it with someone who does not know this. And there are a lot of a lot many people who do not know about these uh, this property and it makes them suffer in exam halls and in general at mathematics whenever we go to pure for the mathematics. So please do share it with people so that many more and more people can understand and apply this in their mathematics. If you have any queries, if you have any questions, any cases you want to discuss, do leave a comment, uh, do leave a comment in the comment section below and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Goodbye.